Yeah, the dog deserves an Oscar nomination. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Love and Monsters. Now this was a movie that I didn't even really knew came out. I had heard about it a little bit. More so of the fact that Dylan O'Brien was attached to it. I'm a little bit kind of sketchy with him. Not so much in terms of the movies he's played, it's just the history he has with the death cure out here in Vancouver. There's, uh, there's a bit of bad blood with him. I gave the film a chance because I had actually seen some pretty decent reviews about it. I'll be honest, I'm actually pretty impressed. This is a one, an original idea, and two, there is such a really well-developed relationship between the main character and this random dog. I obviously am a sucker for dogs in films, but I'm not kidding when I say that this dog should have deserved an Oscar nom. The amount of well-trained animal scenes in this film is staggering. There's so many moments where they purposely hold on the dog for a lot longer than normal films would, and they even have the dog do a few other things. Like, they actually have the dog have a PTSD sort of connection with something from its previous owner. Its name is Boy, and it has more development than some of the characters in this film do. Dylan O'Brien somehow can do really good conversations, one-sided conversations, with the dog. The movie follows Dylan O'Brien's character in this future where there was this radioactive kind of incident with them trying to take out a comet and it turned every single normal insect or insectoid or little creature on the planet into a monster. So now we have giant toads, we have giant ants, we have giant cockroaches, all that stuff. And it's actually one very horrifying and actually pretty well implemented in terms of suspense and horror for a PG-13 film. There's a lot of really good scares, there's some very good tension-filled moments. There is a moment including a worm, Dylan O'Brien and the dog, that is something straight out of, I swear, King Kong or something. It was so well done. It actually got my cackles up. I was so nervous for the characters in that one scene. That's in two part, one due to the very, very well-made special effects in this film. The mix of CG and a little bit of practical here and there really, really helped build the realism and the authenticity of these creatures. And I'll admit, Dylan O'Brien does a really good job as a perpetual teenager. Like, I swear this kid is gonna be stuck in, like, mid-twenties for his entire acting career. He does a very good character, a very unique character. I'll be honest, I don't remember shit of what he was or who he was in the Maze Runner movies, except that he ran really funny. And admittedly, in this movie, he runs really funny too, but he has this very kind of awkward but quirky aspect to him. He has some pretty relatable aspects to him, including that of trying to find his girlfriend who he last saw seven years ago and he's been kind of communicating with her. He wants to go out and find her. He finds that what he's doing is kind of pointless. He doesn't really have any purpose in the colony that he's in, but he doesn't feel that. So he goes out and finds her. Obviously, he comes across lots of monsters. He comes across some people who would teach him how to kind of survive in the world. Uh, played by Michael Rooker with terrible, terrible hair. And the little girl who played Gamora in Avengers Infinity War. If I would say there's any complaints to be had about the movie is that it's kind of very formulaic. It hides it well. The writing and the pacing of the story are very well done. Hell, it even kind of gives a hint of a sequel or a universe sort of at the end of the film, but it doesn't really ham-fist it. And in relating back to the dog, like honestly, the relationship with him and the dog, you've seen this hundreds of times with normal humans, two human characters. You rarely, but rarely ever do you see it kind of played out with a dog. And I'll admit, I, I really enjoy that aspect to it. Probably one of the best aspects of the film, to be honest. Every time there was a cute dog foot, I just kept calling my dog up on the couch and we just wanted to cuddle with her because it was just, it was so great. But yeah, Love and Monsters is a good surprise. If you didn't see it already, I would really recommend seeing it. I enjoyed it so much that I'm just doing this review about it, even though the film's a year old now, I think. So in the end, I'm gonna give this a five out of seven. I'm really impressed. I thought it was fun. I thought it was engaging. I thought it was suspenseful. It had heartfelt moments. And yeah, like I said, it does follow a bit of the normal structure. Like you can pinpoint when bits are gonna happen and there's like, oh yeah, this is this bit, this is this bit, this is this bit of this kind of style of film. And maybe it's a little bit too lighthearted at the end. The message at the end of the film is a little bit, possibly a little bit too lighthearted considering the 
ramifications of what the world is in. This is all we had to do all along, guys. It's just like, you know, just don't lose hope and whatnot. It's like, eh, a little bit of a different situation when you see a, a giant insectoid eat people's heads. Otherwise, definitely check it out. You won't regret it. I, if you're a fan of these kind of movies, monsters, suspense, animals especially, you'll like this movie. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. Hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.